This is ROFM 92.7, your community access radio station, supported through New Zealand On Air. Welcome to the jungle, a thousand spiders, things could go in your favor. Turn around and bite you in the eye, start to make you wanna cry. Kiss your mouth, say goodbye, bye, 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 ain't no way I'm gonna stay. Te whānau whānui o Wairarapa, tēnā koutou. Te Kauma Iwa is a Wairarapa iwi-led COVID-19 vaccination clinic located at 195 to 197 Chapel Street, which is at the rear of Whaiora. If you would like to get vaccinated, please contact us at 0800 282926. Call us any day, 8am to 8 Good afternoon. This is Sean Bush and welcome to Shoutopedia. On today's show, we're going to discuss about what going on is if if it were 60 per day after I played. Um, Mm-hmm. After I played mm. I'm after I played it Right guys, I'll buy off a tree
um, that was Life Goes On by Oliver Tree on Shadowpedia on Arrow FM. <clears throat> Mm. 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 <laughs> um. National leader should should conversations the government should be able to see you what either use the level four again and it's no longer a mandate to keep people locked down. She told staff that could perhaps be used and more used if a more deadly fear and a crowd fire is turned up it should it be a tall box for this outbreak even the case is rose sixty a day. I don't think a we can continue down this path, it's unsustainable, but you can mark with a short, sharp lockdown in August. was told to have been five weeks ago, it was now turned into a longest lockdown we've seen, Colin said. I asked her prior to years later, CJ, how many more level lockdowns she prepared to put a country for before she goes through it. She's given up on a limb magistrate and she doesn't seem to have an answer. The key is we can't be rushing into a level four lockdown every time there's see 20 tag cases in the community. Ask that if it was meant to, she was again using level four again. Mutations of the virus are becoming less deadly, so the virus should not have planned to not to use lockdowns again unless the virus becomes more deadly. As class viruses are mutated in a way it becomes more easily transmissible but few people get severely affected by that so she will be able to move out of that unless enough very kind of and goes complete what the virus should say will happen. Asking if it means the end of the lockdowns she said they should not the first port of call with a vaccinated population and unless f- <coughs> At least they are needed, I see. I don't think they should be the first protocol poor, poor, poor and heavily vaccinated population. Which are sadly to see some progress on. Consul speaking to staff soon after health to a digital audience, believe the community and will never get back to zero cases. <laughs> we may not get back to zero, it's an important thing. We're going to keep finding any infectious ways to continue to concentrate, test and isolate people, Bloomberg told Radio New Zealand. I don't think a level one scenario with the Delta New Zealand means a serious and serious case, and because we've got now, of course, vaccination, Constant New Zealand could afford a whole situation with its previous public manager isolated, given how remote it is. Fears are not mere casualties that are remote as we are. We are surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, Colin said. As if it's fair, given Australia's seen multiple outbreaks and was talk- talking and less people through managed isolation and to receive his papa, Jesus, Australia was far larger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Colin said, Governor has clearly given up on its elimination strategy and so she the first was because of a new new theory and it is pretty good that we are giving up on it because I know there's another variant coming through that apparently the new variant was they not in a position able to worry out through the lockdown they also understand if I believe that they are no longer got a mandate to keep people locking down. The new variant appears to be least features by Delta but it not appeared to 
in New Zealand. First outbreak, one case of had a pet in managed isolation. Good morning, I'm Staff's Chief Political Reporter Henry Cook and I'm joined today by the Leader of the Opposition, Judith Collins. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Henry. You said uh, that you say that the government is giving up on the elimination strategy for COVID. Can you, can you clarify about what you mean by that? Uh, yes, well, for instance, the government uh, went to level three from level four in Auckland uh, with new cases out in the community without any other particular explanation as to why they were doing that. But it is very clear as well, the government has not released the medical advice on which they said they relied to make that decision. And certainly having heard uh, Dr Ashley Bloomfield, Director General of Health, on the issue, it seems as though only some of his advice was being taken. So it's pretty clear they're, they're giving up on it because they know that there's another variant coming through, apparently the Mu variant. They're not in a position to be able to uh, rule out further lockdowns, but they're also understanding, I believe, that they have no longer um, got a mandate to keep locking people down. They say, um, and Ashley Linfield was just on, on RNZ saying this, that zero cases might not be reached again, um, but they will still act with kind of extreme hostility to the virus. They'll still do a lot of, a lot of you know, extensive contact tracing and attempt to ring fence it whenever it pops up. But yes, realistically, there might not be a, a, a few, you know, another week of zero cases. So for that, is that for you giving up on elimination? Well, it is really. I think the point too is that it's only now that the government is talking about uh, doing better contract tracing. They clearly have not brought in rapid antigen testing, which would be so useful at the borders between, say, Auckland and, the, and Waikato. Uh, they could be using this this tool that hasn't been brought into the country or even authorised by Medsafe. And then they have things like um, only recently brought in saliva testing. So they haven't taken some of the steps. And there's other things that they could be doing now, which is putting in orders for the new therapeutic drugs that are being developed right now to deal with COVID-19. The only country um, that's really beaten Delta back uh, is China. And a small village in Taiwan that was quite rural and kind of spread apart. Um, you know, it's become endemic in Victoria, New South Wales, and even probably ACT is probably the better comparator for us in that they've got it down to, you know, single digit or double digit cases a day, but they just can't put it out. There's still just some spread between households, and they know that at the moment they have lift restrictions, it'll probably go up again. Was losing it, you know, was it inevitable that New Zealand was going to, to lose this fight? Well, it's certainly becoming clear that that is the likelihood. So, for instance, when I've talked to virologists about this, they've said that COVID-19 will continue to mutate. It will continue to likely to become more easily transmittable, absolutely endemic throughout the community, but that the seriousness of the effect on humans will become less. So apparently that's what how viruses work. They become very much about not killing their host body, mm. um, but about spreading. And so people will be able to get booster shots, hopefully next year if the government orders them, and that they will be able to keep up um, a degree of immunity. But the, the issue, I think, too, is that this virus, um, people are used to getting an immunisation and then pretty much not getting the winter flu, for instance. Mm. But this virus, the immunisation, as we know, doesn't actually stop people getting the virus, they're just a high likelihood they won't get it, and they certainly can transmit it, but they're less likely to end up in an intensive care unit or with serious effects. If in two weeks cases have gone up a lot, you know, we're seeing 50, 60 cases a day, should Auckland go back to level four? No, I don't think we can continue down this path. Uh, it is unsustainable economically. The short, sharp lockdown that Auckland was told they'd be having five weeks ago has now turned into the longest lockdown that we've seen. It is very severe, and the effects on the economy, but also on people's mental health, is very severe. And we really don't know the full effects of that yet. 
I asked the Prime Minister yesterday just essentially how many more of these level four lockdowns is she prepared to put the country through before she confirms that she's given up on the elimination strategy. And she didn't seem to have an answer to that. She actually, I thought, became very flustered on it. But it is important that we move past constantly locking down a third of the population and at the same time not having proper uh, quarantine facilities purpose built, all these sorts of things. The government could have avoided this, but they didn't plan and they didn't execute. So, I guess the first part of that, do you think she should be able to build it out? Should, should, should that be the last level four either? Should we, you know, it's like a by level four? Well, it's clear that the virus is mutating in a way where it becomes more easily transmittable, but fewer people uh, get severely affected by it. So, she should be able to move, or certainly have a plan to move out of that. And unless another variant comes along that completely goes against uh, what the virologists say will happen. So it is important that the government has a plan and that they tell us what it is. They have not told us what it is, and I don't think they've got a plan. But for you, you'd, you'd like to say no more level four ever again, unless maybe there's a variant which is so yeah, deadly. Well, you don't, you, yeah. Yeah, unless it's needed. I certainly don't think that the first port of call should be if you have a heavily vox vaccinated population, which we're starting to get some progress now, you get you have in place um, purpose-built quarantine facilities for people with COVID, so they're not out there spreading it. Then you have co contact tracing, you have better, uh, things like rapid antigen testing, saliva testing, you take it seriously. But the key has to be that we can't just go rushing into level four lockdown every time there's 20 cases in the community. You just said um, that was quite a bit avoided, uh, but I guess if we look, if we look overseas, uh, everyone else has had a Delta outbreak, basically, and, and once it's gone endemic, it's been, it's been an issue. So could this really have been avoided? Is, is it so transmissible that, it, you know, if we're going to have something like MIQ, it was always going to... Well, when you look overseas, out. there's not many countries that are as remote as we are. We are surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, and we are in the Tasman Sea. It's not as though we've got it's land like borders. We don't have land borders, yes, but they Australia were taking less people per capita than we are. Yeah, and, but, and they've had multiple outbreaks. But they're extremely, much bigger country as well and much higher population. Um, but it is possible to because we were fortunate enough to have a country that most people are very compliant as well with requests from the government and orders from the government. So we are a, a different a different people, but also in, in New Zealand, we were able to, Delta came in in April, as I recall, in the MIQ facility. Um, it was next seen in, in about July. The government could have prepared, they could have got a vaccination rate up. And as you're looking at Australia, Australia had a very low vaccination rate too but they're now well ahead of us and we have to keep moving to catch up and overtake that. But we had 20% of our population, eligible population, vaccinated before this Delta outbreak. So yeah, it could have been avoided actually. If Delta is um, endemic and we're coming up on mm. elimination at some level, um, obviously there's a bit of a hard choice around Auckland and the rest of the country because Delta is not endemic outside of Auckland. Um, you've been in the South Island over the weekend. Yeah, no, there's, there's not, nothing. There's nothing down, down here. We're in Wellington. There's been no cases in, in, in a long, very long time. But, uh, and currently it looks the same that way because Auckland's locked away. But if, is that really sustainable? Or will there be a point where we let people from Auckland travel to the rest of the country and, you know, inevitably with that, let Delta travel to the South Island? Well, we'd like to be able to say that if this virus continues to mutate in a stage, because Delta's there now, but it will be mutating to something else. Apparently, Mu is the next variant. Um, but Delta's what we've got in New Zealand. There's it's no, what we've got in New I mean, Zealand at the moment. There's not enough Delta in New Zealand that's going to mutate. No, no, and we, don't, and we should, wherever possible, try and stop that. But that's one of the things it could do, for instance, is to have rapid antigen testing. So if people are worried, as they should be, about Delta moving out of Auckland into Waikato, don't give prisoners the ability to go and take Delta into Waikato. Have rapid antigen testing before people are allowed out of you know, the prison or whatever. That could have been done. And yet, for some unfathomable reason, we're one of the few countries in the world that doesn't allow rapid antigen testing, which could give us a result in 15 minutes. 
would you like to see that used for basically all movement outside of Auckland? I would have thought that was the sensible thing to do at the moment. Obviously, once we get uh, fewer people with Delta, it is very important that we move past this lockdown. We can't have our country in, with Auckland in a level three or level four lockdown forever. The Prime Minister yesterday said when I asked her, it's costing uh, $750 million a week for Auckland to remain level four lockdown. When we were in level four lockdown for the whole of the country, that was $1.5 billion. It is not only hard on Auckland, it's hard on the rest of the country. Obviously, a lot of the um, criticism you made yesterday was that the time used, the time of you know, kind of the golden summer, was not used well enough to invest in things like ICU capacity. Mm-hmm. Do you, do, do you, polling shows, though, that voters overwhelmingly trust Labor more on, on health than they trust you. If you look at funding over, over you know, your last term of government and their term, they, they have put a lot more money into health but than, where you, they put than it? you guys did. They put it into bureaucracy. They put it into changing structures rather than actually delivery. What happened to the measles vaccination? Oh, I know, they, they forgot to order that one and get it rolled out. What's happened to the winter flu vaccination this last year? Late again. Bureaucracy they are the ones who are planning a national COVID response. Though, right? David Skeg said this early on in the pandemic, he said, we've hollowed out the Wellington back room, and that's hurt. That's one of the reasons we have a good pandemic plan. We have a flu pandemic plan when COVID started. I mean, is, is, aren't you talking out of both sides of your mouth here? No. What is very clear is that a vaccine rollout must be, must include GPs, pharmacists, people out in the community who people trust, people they know. Having been vaccinated, as I'm sure you were, one of these big barns that they have set up, perfectly fine, people go through, but there's no privacy. Mm. There's no sense of um, understanding what it is that's going ahead. And you and I are fortunate enough to get a lot of information that a lot of other people won't access. And when we're dealing with things like hesitancy on vaccines, really no country in the world has been successful unless they use primary practitioners in the medical centres. So, look, uh, people under COVID became very frightened, as they still are. And it was very interesting last year to talk about anything else. As soon as COVID came up, people were very fearful. And fear is a very powerful and motivating factor. But we need to move past fear and we need to move to hope. And that hope has to be around life after lockdowns. Jeff Collins, thank you. Thank you. Um, But... But you know, if it did it fair again, we'll probably use level four again. But if the government considered uh, allowing Delta to spread, uh, spread in the community, but still fit le- lesser, since since we get more vaccinations around. Hmm. <laughs> next song is. It is. It is satisfaction by being a Benassi. Push me and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. Push me and then just touch me till I can get my Satisfaction, 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 satisfaction.
and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. Push me and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. featured by Beanie Benassi on Jadapedia on Arrow FM. <laughs> um. The Gamma Heads uh, insists that via association safeguards spelled in the new characterism laws of phrase Parliament fights for perspective of through this final stage the counter-terrorism by which would boil quite fairly considered a uh, Consider terrorist attack a tea. Crime raising a plan in the terror attack and providing new warrant to search and ensure that it has been advanced to cover in the wake of the team of the third terror attack at Walkland's Lynn Mall. And be some from a library and national parties photo bell through its second reading on Tuesday afternoon. But Green Atom Marapai is all opposed to both shooter because it's always been passed, has I will give a state overreaching powers. <laughs> Ms. D. Andrew led the responsible for the government's counter terror reforms, caught over her house on Tuesday after a feast, because it's about overreaching or 
over wearing powers of a state could be assured. In the end, I will come back to the real of a state as being a shadow of of March 19 and September 1st year. That's a folks in our community, some who have come to our community from a bull who have caused us harm. Some of these actually will be very hard to, to, to guess we see, but others will probably exercise us as pleasure and inquiry to continue their needle fighters, be able to appropriation to write time to keep us all safe. He said about maintaining the high threshold for laying terrorism charges, including safeguards such as requiring attorney general to sign off precautions, excluding protests or interfacility from terror laws and requiring legal proof of a terrorist. Both of one or two files can be used as such as this lead committee is very reviewing the bill if it's a tweak the definition of terrorism in the proposed laws initially for terrorism described to as an act of carried out for one or more purposes and finds the cautious mm. mm. To indicate fear in the population of course a government or international organization to do or so abstain from something. The committee of faith fear was not specific enough. It was changed to an act intended to intimidate population. What two of us can consider more in line with comparable divisions in Canada, United, the United Kingdom and Australia for the committee was also moved to simplify for proposed criminal offence for planning a two day to remove carvel that could have stopped people being prosecuted for planning to plan a terror attack. This is intended to to clarify the scope of the fiends just as a cross for a seat in the house. Hmm. Also the room of to be not to wear over for creation by the new planning and preparation of age within the bell. Grand Party Touches Agency spokes with Diana Turano said the bell was being passed and had so that mark for the Auckland attack was new professional required time for more security we remember if we seen us before if people remember back to us while well, we had warranted because Charles we does so of course news are trying to board the past the Charles of Terrorism Suppression Act. It's it's a time many my my community social justice groups. And if I mean to go see if I ask people to find terrorists they will come looking for us and I did until I said we had our Euro was worth writing our fight out of it in the Euro areas and we're talking. At party, just as I saw Nicole McKee, she, she had hope Parliament has allowed the concerns about the Bell Health Bios Law Society, Human Rights Commission, and Privacy Commissioner. <laughs> The bell she was due to report it back to her house on 5th of November and we see no clearance of fourth as part of to be hired, she said. Watching this bell progress just by the significant concerns raised by some medical cameras kept being left and exploited can leave a trade off between security and freedoms being unbalanced with a executive average fiend being permitted. But go ahead, promise to boost counter terrorism laws. After the race of World Commission, quite into a crisis, must here take the child to the possible need of precursor crimes in all criminal phases for terrorism and planning or use to disrupt attacks.
Special provision does not exist under the terrorist is appreciated that as well if a place has tried as a to charge a terrorist by heart attack in Auckland last month, but it was denied by the judge. <laughs> this is for a clip for you about Prime Minister and Prime Minister Andrew Carson's year did out about a take at the supermarket in Auckland. <laughs> Good afternoon. This afternoon at approximately 2.40 p.m., a violent extremist undertook a terrorist attack on innocent New Zealanders in the Newland Countdown in Auckland. This afternoon I want to share what we know about this event, but also what we know about the terrorist. But first I want to acknowledge the six innocent people who have been attacked. Three, I understand, are seriously injured. This was a violent attack. It was senseless, and I am so sorry it happened. The attack began at 2.40 p.m. and was undertaken by an individual who was a known threat to New Zealand. The individual was under constant monitoring and it was the police surveillance team and special tactics group who were part of that monitoring and surveillance that shot and killed him within, I'm told, the space of roughly 60 seconds of the attack starting. For the detail of the events today, I will pass to Commissioner Andrew Costa to provide detail of the Special Tactics Group operation. I'll then say more of what we know about the terrorist and the government's efforts to protect New Zealanders from him. Thank you, Prime Minister. As the Prime Minister has said, this individual was under heavy surveillance as a consequence of concerns about his ideology. Today he travelled from where he lived in Glenedon to the countdown in New Lynn as he had done before. He was closely watched by surveillance teams and a tactical team to monitor his actions and behaviour. He entered the store as he had done before. He obtained a knife from within the store Surveillance teams were as close as they possibly could be to monitor his activity. When the commotion started, two police tactical operators from the STG moved to his location and engaged him. Oh, I had to leave it. So then. Don't turn, unfortunately. Um, Uh, this surprising result in Canada's election for yesterday. If somebody have not heard of the results of a Canadian federal election just yet, it's 99.42 seen counted. I can tell you that that just a But just to show that one one minority government with getting one seat fair was just a fair was him not feeling happy, but the conservatives remain in opposition for another time with hundred and nineteen seat hundred and nineteen seats. Despite winning the popular vote Five million five hundred sixty-seven thousand. Five million five hundred sixty-seven thousand compared to Liberals five million two hundred eighteen thousand. But we could be asked gain support with two gaining two seats. New Democrats only gain one seat. 
and Paul, enemy Paul, he tried to try to run for Torrance, but ultimately lost out. That is no, that was actually a no brainer. Mm. Um. So, next song I will be playing because I don't talk about Canadian parks after I normally talk about the US and here in New Zealand. Next up. I'll be playing. I'm going to play Metallica. Ride for Lightning.
Ride for Lightning by Metallica on Shadowpedia on Aero EFM. Mm. <sighs> I'm gonna tell you for largest earthquakes in history mm. um, Today Melbourne was hit by an unexpected 6.0 earthquake that caused damage to buildings and building collapses This is fairly uncommon in Australia and one of the felt shakers comparable to that of ours here in New Zealand. <laughs> because Australia is not known to earthquakes because Australia does not have a test active tectonic, tectonic activity. That straddles between two places where New Zealand has Australia is only set on one stable plate. Right, I'm going to tell you the biggest earthquakes in history. Mummy 9.6 of the west coast of northern Sumatra. On the 4th of April 2012, Mumba 9 is in Sijing, India border region. No, in Struck on the 30th of August 1950. Number 8, Red Eyes and Tony Eyes, Alaska, with strike on the 4th of April 1965. 4th of February 1965. Number 7, Never Coast of Ecuador 9, the Ecuador Columbia earthquake of 1906. Struck on the 5th of January 1906. 27th of February 2002, with uh, a four day earthquake truck of Ultra by Bojo 9 as a mill earthquake. They triggered a tsunami warning across the Pacific Mama 5 off the east coast of Kimshaguka, Peninsula Russia, 19th Muta earthquake truck on a April 4th of November 1952 with a Nine earthquake, fifty-two, and number four near the east coast of Honshu, Japan. Nine to to Tohoku earthquake. Struck on the level of March two hours level was measuring nine point one. Works alongside nine point one as well as number of right the west coast of northern Sumatra. Nine to the Sumatra, Edmund Islands earthquake. Two hours for Sumatra earthquake to Zambia and in an Indian Ocean earthquake. Struck on on Boxer Day of two thousand and four. Mamma 2 South Alaska known as a 964 Great Alaska Earthquake known as a nice Prince William Sound Earthquake and a Good Friday Earthquake Drunk on a from March 1964 And finally a larger earthquake of all time inspired by Old Chile known as a Belvedere Earthquake Drunk on a 22nd of May 1960 <laughs> 
<laughs> right, the next song I'll be playing is um. It's a The Stereo Love But you're a man, Fader Jungle on Jadapedia on Airy Theme
First year of Baira Mara Faker Chigaluya on Chadapedia on Arrow EV. The fact of the day is a hashtag to single tier quarter ultra octo four. According to Miriam with the digital for auto prefix referred to the eight points of a popular symbol, but for four remains a mystery one theory. Kinds remains a mystery one theory. Kinds of kinds of all the English word for village. I thought it was symbols look like a verse surrounded by eight fields. Well, that's it for Shadowpedia. I'll see you next Friday. Bye. Mm-hmm.